Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One Golf Victor, or Good Vibrations if you prefer. Here to talk about a phenomenon known as an electromagnetic pulse, EMP, and how it relates to amateur radio equipment, particularly how it can affect your radio by causing a current surge in your antenna. Here's just a very simple drawing of a radio transceiver, coaxial cable, ballon transformer, and a dipole antenna. Now what you have here with this ballon is a probably a one-to-one -one transformer uh, which simply serves to interface the balanced antenna with the unbalanced transmission line. However, should there be a nearby lightning strike, it doesn't have to be directly on your antenna. You don't have to suffer a direct hit. If it's within a few hundred feet uh, and it's sufficiently powerful, it will introduce a current surge, a, a spike in this antenna, which can get through a ballon uh, transformer and down through your coax and into your radio and very easily fry your radio. How do you protect your radio against such a thing? It's not really very hard to do. This is coaxial cable and a cross section of which might look like this. An outer conductor, the shield, which is already grounded, provided of course that you have a good electrical ground in your radio. <clears throat> the center conductor of the uh, coaxial cable is what is going to conduct this current surge down into your radio and do the damage. Well you have a 50 ohm impedance here. Suppose that you place an inductor that is a coil of wire of just the right value, just the right reactance between this center conductor and ground. Symbolize it like this. Here's your inductor. If you make it too large, it won't be effective. If you make it too small, it will interfere with the transmission of the signal. But 50 ohms is a relatively low impedance. So if you made the reactance of this coil, say, 500 ohms at the frequency of interest, your ham radio frequency, it would still be small enough in value to short out a good deal of the electromagnetic pulse surge current <clears throat> that would come down through your coax and otherwise fry your radio. Now, all that said, if there's a thunderstorm in progress near your location, uh, and in particular if it's occurring right where you are, you're kind of foolish to operate the radio at all, and in fact, your best bet is to disconnect this coaxial cable and ground the center conductor directly. Keep it away from your radio and ground it. Uh, there are other arrangements that can be made to protect other types of antennas, some of which involve inductors like this, some of which actually involve terminating the antenna in an electrical ground at the far end. But the other aspect of electromagnetic pulse that I'd like to talk about now has to do with utility power lines and utility infrastructure. Just about all of us have experienced a momentary power blackout during a thunderstorm caused by a lightning strike producing an electromagnetic pulse that got into the power wires and caused a current surge that very likely fried one of the transformers in your neighborhood. I've had that happen, I believe, last summer here in the summer of 2013 here in Leed, South Dakota. That happened twice, <clears throat> and it was annoying. It was several hours without power. Well, in the event of an electromagnetic pulse, uh, occurring on a large scale, say for example a nuclear detonation at a high altitude, or 
our Mr. or Ms. Sun having a coronal mass ejection producing an electromagnetic pulse that causes current surges in power wires all over the country. Well, you can bury power wires, you can bury transformers, but if you still have any power wires above ground over any significant span, they're going to pick up this current surge and carry it into the wires underground and if the transformers are also underground it isn't going to matter much if you have exposed wires at all and there's a large scale coronal mass ejection and electromagnetic pulse that covers the entire hemisphere uh, it isn't going to take very much to do a whole lot of damage to a whole lot of transformers and other systems that are in fact shielded or buried. Another way um, is to use a so-called Faraday cage which is a special kind of metal screen cage which is grounded in such a way as to shield against uh, electromagnetic pulses so that they can't get inside that cage. Well, that's all f just fine, but if there's a whole lot of wires outside of the cage, it isn't going to be relevant at all that those surges are going to come in there anyway. They're going to come in as, as the current surges. It's not the electromagnetic pulse itself or the coronal mass ejection itself that does the damage. What does the damage is the current surge. That is what does it. Remember, it's just like it's not the fall that kills you. It's when you hit the ground at the end of the fall. That's what kills you. The only way to prevent that, of course, is to find a way to get a parachute so that when you fall, you land softly. It's true with your radio, and it's true on a large scale with the utility grid, which I have made a couple of videos about, and its vulnerability to electromagnetic pulses. The only way to ensure that we were 100% invulnerable would be to bury everything. But obviously that's not practical. There are seismic zones, there are there's earth shifting regions and all kinds of things so there's always going to be the need to run some of these wires above the surface and those wires are usually going to be high tension lines and those are going to be connected to large expensive transformers so we are going to figure out a way someday I hope to protect these lines against the current surges that would develop from an electromagnetic pulse. It's not, as I understand it, terribly expensive, certainly a lot less expensive than the war on drugs or some of these misguided international adventures that we have put ourselves out to in recent years. But that's one of the one of the weaknesses of the free enterprise system, unfortunately, is that the short-term profit in such an investment as protecting ourselves against electromagnetic pulse effects, the short-term profit it just isn't there. We have to think long-term. But if we don't make that short-term investment today, the long-term cost is going to be a whole lot more than the short-term profit that we lose by making that investment today. So, Stan Gibalisco, W1GV, amateur radio operator, and gloom and doom, profit. Not, to short, not profit, but profit. Like the ones in the Bible, you know? That kind of profit. Oh, Lord. I'm, don't call me a false prophet. Don't call me a prophet. Call me a person who's warning against this now. But when, I, when the time comes that I'm able to, to say I told you so, 
I don't think I'm going to feel much like it. Stan Gibalisco signing off. Until next time, 73 and so long.